thanks everybody for coming. I uh, call this uh, meeting of the Waitley Select Board open. Um, the first order of business is the meeting minutes from the November 8th and November 21st meetings. Uh, do you have any comments? None. None. Meeting minutes? I would take a motion then. Move to approve both sets of minutes. I second that. Okay. Uh, since we're in person, we don't have to do roll call. Uh, all those in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Okay, those minutes pass. Thank you. Um, the next item is the vendor and payroll warrants. Uh, if you had a chance to look over those, are there any no. comments or? No, I have no questions. Okay, well, that's a no vote required. Uh, for public, now it's time for public comment. It's time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. So I see you've got two people here. Do you have any comments for the public comment period? Okay, uh, I'm looking on the Zoom meeting. I only see four boxes. Are there people that I can't see on here? There's not, I don't see the thing indicating there's a second page either. So I think um, all of the those squares are accounted for here. So I don't think there's any public on Zoom who's uh, looking to, uh, who's looking to comment. So I'm going to move on to, uh, well, schedule appointments, there are none. Um, COVID-19, we only have a reminder that COVID-19 rapid tests are available at the town offices. If you need one, um, stop by, uh, we can get you one. Okay, and then we've got a number of things under old business and new business. Um, and some people might be tuning in early because there'll be a special town meeting at 7.30. Uh, we are, I think we'll likely to get through all of this and and end right before a special town meeting. But if not, we'll stop, have a special town meeting at 7.30 and then continue our meeting after. So let's go to old business. There's one item. Uh, we want to discuss the Conway School of Design's proposal to develop a climate resilience plan for the town of Waitley. And I understand that Hannah has more information for us. Yes. So take it away, Hannah. Okay, so um, the Conway School of Design has offered to complete a climate resilience plan for us pro bono, completely free. Um, we would be working with students at the school as part of one of their class projects. Um, my hope is that this will kind of cover the areas that we haven't covered with other plans. So including um, focus on the social implications of climate change in Wheatley. Um, they also noted in their uh, proposal a carbon sequestration option to discuss potential uh, avenues forward for carbon sequestration in Wheatley. Um, I think that this could be a really cool basis for a potential MVP application. Um, and uh, yeah, so just another thing to keep in mind is that Waitley doesn't have any environmental justice populations in town. So anything that we can do to kind of um, like uh, beef up the social implications and say, look, this, these actions will have a social impact on our town as well, um, I think would be really valuable for future grant applications. So um, logistically speaking, I would be the primary point of contact for the students. And then my hope is to assemble a small core group of people to meet with them once or twice a month um, to answer any like longer range questions that they might have. Um, yeah, do you have any questions? Can I, can I provide any more information? <laughs> can you give a brief synopsis of what exactly a climate is like? plan is and also define climate sequestration. That's really Yeah. So uh, this climate resilience plan would be focused more on the impact of climate change in Waitley um, and how it would give us specific recommendations for how to address those impacts. And that's where I'm hoping that these social implications will come in. It'll take more of a social lens in Waitley. Um, so they'll likely look at uh, population data, statistical data about the town of Waitley. Uh, anticipated climate impacts locally, um, any applicable GIS and mapping, um, and create a plan for us, kind of similar to the municipal vulnerability uh, preparedness plan. Oh, yeah. yeah. And carbon sequestration. Yes, carbon sequestration. Oh, it's this really cool thing. I remember the word, <laughs> even though I don't know what it's. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that's contributing to climate change. Um, 
one of the ways that we can kind of work against that is to create avenues for carbon sequestration. You can do things like planting forests um, and the trees will suck the carbon out of the air and sequester it in, in their root development space, basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, about 50% of the mass of a tree is carbon dioxide taken from the air and the other half is water. Yeah. So, so, it's a, so all the trees are basically pulling out CO2. So it's the natural kind of way that carbon leaves the atmosphere and goes into the land. Yeah, exactly. So we could yeah. plan for that in the future yeah. as well. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, like forest management might be yeah. uh, a part of it. Right, and exactly. Making goals uh, related to that. Yeah, um, yeah. They're a landscape design school, so they would probably take a land use lens to look at all of this. But um, yeah, I think that's their plan. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I would, uh, I'd be happy to be one of the people who is on your little committee of really, of, of, yeah, I teach a course on climate change and the physics behind it. And, uh, so, yeah, so, so if someone comes up with the word carbon sequestration, I could. <laughs> that would be so great. I would love that. I can tell you that you're on the carbon cycle with me too. <laughs> Perfect. Great. <laughs> Cool. And I will take part in it. I am not sure to what degree I'll be able to, but I yeah. definitely would like to be part of it. Sounds great. Awesome. Yeah, the more people, the merrier. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You have to think about the social implications because sometimes that's good. That's going to be a little subtle sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I think we could really use um, input from well, someone who's unlike me because I'm all science all the time, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, somebody unlike me who can fill in and, and kind of look at those other kinds of things. I would be really interested in that. Yeah. So if we can think of among us, we might be able to think of a good person for that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Please send folks my way. I'd be happy to try to get them to join the committee. Yeah. Okay, great. Are there any other no questions? Or any, good anybody in the room? Okay. All right, well, let's go on to new business. Um, and the first item is. Do, the, do we need to approve anything? I was just, just to discuss. I didn't think there was a vote. Okay. Because uh, I think we just, last time we may have voted to definitely go with the Conway School if they're willing to do something for free. Yeah. Do we need a vote? <clears throat> I think we, I think, I think we, I think we're all set. We're all okay. set. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Okay. okay, good. Um, so under new business, the first item is to discuss Carly Park restroom accessibility project bids. And then also on this one, we need a vote to award the contract to the qualified low bidder. <laughs> Should that be what we decide to do? So Brian, I think you have the information. I do, yeah. So this was um, a rebid of the of the project that we um, bid out the first time and we received one, um, one response that was way over budget for the project that we had to um, renovate the restrooms at Hurley Park and, and uh, make one of them uh, KDA compliant so that uh, there's universal access to the restrooms then, which there is currently not. So this time we received four bids um, and the low bid was uh, from Cornerstone Building Services LLC out of Poyoke. It was uh, 52721 mm. So um that was the low bid the high bid was ninety four thousand eight hundred. just substantially less than the last time yeah, yeah. and it was the same company who hmm. did the ninety four. interesting <laughs> it doesn't stick once throw it against wall again and maybe you see what happens but maybe we um, the other. i contacted uh, the references that were listed here um and they were all uh, very positive about uh, cornerstone's work um cornerstone has done a lot of actually uh, bathroom renovations and restroom renovations. They've actually done a lot of them um, and a lot of them for different municipalities. So um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have any uh, hesitancy to. Okay. With uh, Cornerstone. So, um, okay. that, how did Cornerstone come to, were they on the stuff? Did we reach out to them or did they find it on a posting? Do you have any idea? Um, I, I don't know. Um, we did some more uh, outreach through um, some of our townspeople, um, but I'm not sure how they 
because presumably they didn't get the initial right money to the like yeah. bid. Or yeah, and it, it could have been an issue of timing too. Um, I think some of these companies get slower during the winter. So it might have been an issue of, of timing as well. But I mean, we got four instead of the one. So uh, we did try to do more outreach through uh, local okay. company. Um, okay. And what is our budget? What kind of funding do we have for this? Um, we budgeted, so this is part of the, the larger yeah. early part grant, but the estimate that we were working off was off of was just over 50,000. So mm -hmm. um, it's actually, it's a little bit surprising because when we put together those estimates, it was mm. pre when the world fell apart. So, mm -hmm. um, so, it's, so it fits in budget and we've got good references. Yep. Okay. Do you have any other questions you want to ask? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, like well, a motion then. I would move to award the Hurley Park Restroom Accessibility Project to Cornerstone Builders in the amount of 52721 Stated by Brian. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, great. So that that is done. Excellent. Um, uh, the next few items are discussion items. First is uh, discuss the installation of water meters on town buildings. Um, I guess maybe Brian, you can fill us in on the, the details there. I think I understand it, but let me, uh, I'll defer to, to you because yeah. you may have more details. I have some more details and I think Fred wants to talk about it as well. Okay. Um, so, I don't know how far to start back, but I'll I'll start back when when the water department, the town water department, was first formed. Uh, there was no enterprise fund, so their funds were part of the general fund. So, when the water system was put in on most of the town buildings at the time, there was no water meters put in because it was essentially the town would essentially be paying itself. So, um, when the enterprise fund was created, which separated the finances of the water department into the enterprise fund from the rest of the town water meters were not put in so um what's been happening is that the town has not been paying for water and the enterprise fund has been carrying those costs since the enterprise fund was created mm -hmm. um, the town buildings that we were talking about um are fire station the highway garage the police station, Hurley Heap Park, and um, the cemeteries. Um, the school. Right. So, so in terms of the elementary school, the elementary school, I'm told, has a meter, mm. um, but it's just not charged water. <coughs> it, there may need to be an upgrade to that meter, but same deal. The, the, there's no water bill that's being paid. This building has a meter. And this building, building has a meter, and the town has been paying for this. Oh, okay. Um, for water here. Okay. Pretty sure. 99% sure. Okay. Um, although I'm looking at Amy and she's questioning that, but um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll double check. Um, it was never an issue with the center school, library, town hall, it's Mike's house, because, well, I'll take Mike's house out of that because I'm not positive, um, because it was part of the water district. And mm. payment was made to the water district um, mm. for that water, but now it's now it's going to be part of the water the town water mm. department. So this decision is also relevant uh, and applicable to those buildings as well. And when it's part of the water district, uh, was it metered? I would imagine there's some metering there. Yeah, they, but presumably those meters are not the same kind of meters as we use for the water department. Correct. All the Yes, all the district meters need to be upgraded or have been upgraded. Yeah. Or, okay. or will be upgraded. as they make that as they're connected. Yeah. yeah. Um so that's that's sort of mm. the situation on the ground. Um we've asked I've asked Wayne to, to try to gather the costs as to what those would be. Um the water department regulations are that if it's a one-inch service line, which is typical for residential. That cost is 
part of the hookup fee that's paid. Mm -hmm. But if it's for something larger than that, so a, a two-inch, you know, a two-inch connection or something larger for, let's say, a sprinkler system or or some other uh, mm -hmm. use that requires large volumes of water, um, that cost would not be included, as I understand it. And there's also things like backflow devices that that may need to be put in as well. That would mm -hmm. that would cost. Um, that would cost additional money. Um, but this came up in the in in the discussions about the water department billing software. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been part of a larger discussion about uh, CLFRF monies um, and whether the water department, which is funded through the enterprise, fund should have access to them. And really, there's this ongoing talk that happens about water department enterprise fund versus the town in terms of equipment sharing and who does what for who. And it just sort of comes into this big mm -hmm. um, this big argument about who does what for who and whether the town yeah. should do stuff for the water department or the water department should do stuff for the town. And it's just part of this sort of mess that's been created as yeah, yeah. as we as, as the enterprise fund was created in in probably not enough forethought was put into you know how the, some of those details how yeah. the details and how the enterprise fund and the general fund would sort of interact. Um, so, I mean, so so for years, the the, I, I mean, I'll I'll put it bluntly, the water users have been paying for water used at town properties, yeah. um, and right. it's just it's just fact, right? It That's, just yeah, it right. doesn't happen. Um, the water department truck. You know, plows our parking lots. Although we we pay the driver out of the town funds, but it's yeah, wear and tear yeah. on their truck. And yeah, and the, the water department does pay overhead. Um, the water department enterprise fund does pay overhead to the town general fund for things that they use. Um, you know, for the mm -hmm. treasure collector time, for their insurance, for you know the office that they use back. Here. You know, there's all right, sorts of offsets, yeah. and they pay overhead. Um, and that's probably one thing that we'll need to look at in the upcoming budget season in terms of should there maybe be some offsets in the other direction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah. Um, the issue, right, I guess right now is is about water meters. So. Right. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, my, my, my main thought is somebody who moved here like within a few years of the water being put in. Um, and there's kind of always been this, well, uh, some fraction of the town has a water system, but certainly as far as the debt, the initial debt, there were like everybody was paying for it. And it just yeah. struck me at first as a little bit of, oh, hey, <laughs> now that subset of people have been supporting something that's really for the whole town. So that seems like it's at least tipping the scales a little bit the other way. And I wouldn't know the, the order of magnitude is probably not comparable. So um, yeah. I, I'm not necessarily. Um, really wrought over some the the folks who benefited the most from the water system, having paid a little bit more, perhaps for something that benefit everyone in the sense that our town buildings are for the benefit of everyone. So, but we've probably rightly made the decision to kind of try to as much as we can separate the finances, and even if it turns out we decide that there's some offsets going in, in either direction. Metering seems like it makes sense. Like understanding the amount of water that's used in common interest with it. That's information that the water system, I think, should have um, a, in order to be able to plan for, for things. So I, this, even if it didn't have any financial implications, I think we need the information. And it will cost money to put in meters. But that will be valuable information uh, for our water system, regardless of whether there's a feeling of, well, the town now has to pay for this. And I, I, I think it's valuable information. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of arguing pro meter, uh, regardless of what happens to the, the idea of payment. You know, so sorry about jumping in there. I know uh, no, Fred and, and Julie have some. No, I, I just think in general, the we shouldn't have these loose wink and a nod kind of understandings of, well, you're using some water, we're using some of this, and 
to sort of let yeah. this, you're using let's smart as, as, as much as yeah. we can. Let's quantify and you know work out a the system you know, whereby the town actually pays for the water it uses <laughs> in these buildings. Um, yeah, yeah but if we really want to separate it and get it financially on its own, um, and uh, you don't have a lot of these loose ends, I, it will probably be impossible to like completely. Every time you pull at a thread, another one's going to come loose. Yeah, right. But hopefully, they'll be smaller and smaller and smaller threads as we go. Yeah, along. I understand there's some difficulties with metering early. That, that's yeah, in terms of yeah, it's ideally, like it would be in a building, but <coughs> where the yeah, where the meter would the meter would likely need to go underground. Let me put it that way. Because on how the main comes into the park, there's a lot of um, it splits off. It early. splits off before it gets into the pavilion. So, oh, we'll like to go under so, um, okay. probably yeah. up by the road. Okay. Well, we're gonna have some diggers out there, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a lot. I I think that once we get figures from Wayne about what this is gonna cost. I think CLFRF money is a perfect place for this to come from. Uh, it's a kind of, kind of project that then be nice not to have to put into the general budget, but take out right. of funds. Um, yeah, just the water system related. Yeah. Um, and then there is the argument that still the water system only benefits certain people in the town. But I guess this sort of means, well, it really benefits everyone because it's benefiting. All of these town buildings. Well, so it's not to, to make sense. It's not even a question of benefits, it's a question of yeah. fairness to the water department. Mm -hmm. And the town should pay for what it's using. So mm -hmm. I, in that yeah. in that way, it no. affects the whole town. It's not just the water. Oh, no, I, I, I was thinking of it. There's an argument that's sometimes made that the CLFRF money should only be used for things that benefit everyone in the town. I don't know how you would measure that, but I'm, just, I'm repeating an, an argument that I don't necessarily agree with. Um, so that things that go to our water system doesn't then benefit everyone in the town. Well, is what they're saying, and I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I, I happen to think CLF or like should go to things that benefit the whole town, but I think that this, while it's to the detriment of the town, that it will have to pay its bills. <laughs> it it does it's affect right. the whole town. This isn't a yeah. water department specific work mm -hmm. only. Benefit. This is something the town should have done long since. Yeah. Um, Perhaps. Yeah. And it it impacts the whole the usage of whole of town buildings, which everybody uses. It's not a water department specific benefit. I don't have any conditional that. I think you've all all said it. Three would be let's let's not keep doing business on a wink and a nod. Yeah. So I just think we now have to wait to get yeah hard hard numbers and then yeah yeah that's yeah let's find out I, I understand that that's underway figuring out the right. cost is that right Brian yeah okay so that'll be on a, another meeting in the future when we have more data okay all right very good well, let's go on to item C uh, municipal digital equity planning program. And I remember reading a little bit about this, but I don't remember a lot about it. Yeah. What do they mean by digital equity? So who is Hannah? Please ask me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is an opportunity for technical assistance to complete a digital equity plan for the town. Um, so what they're looking to do is help kind of guide municipal decision making and investments into um internet accessibility, they're going to look at um, internet availability and affordability, device access, and digital skills. Say that um, again. So internet availability. Uh-huh. And cost, affordability. Yep. Um, device access. When they say device access, I mean people's like access computer. to a laptop. Yeah. Okay. Um, and digital skills. Okay. Um, and then the hope is that we can use the plan that comes from this process to uh, apply to future um, broadband infrastructure grants. Um, okay. The, the 
So they'll do it like most other planning processes. They'll do a conditions analysis and then a community engagement, and then they'll provide us the plan with the recommendations that we have. Um, our hope is to kind of be able to look at not only internet availability throughout town, but also internet quality. Um, and I think that this could be a valuable exercise to examine that. Um, we don't mm -hmm. have any other documents that are yeah. dedicated precisely for internet availability and yeah. quality in town. Yeah, and I don't even know how to measure quality. Yeah, right, like that, speed or like would, would we? Is there a, thing, a device we can put on to measure it? Yeah, I it, feel like you know at, exactly. To, yeah, I yeah. don't even know how to measure that. Yeah, I think I that we love can to quantify that. Yeah, um, and it's cool. So this is a technical assistance grant, so it wouldn't be a big lift on our end. All we would have to do is work with the contractor. They would complete the plan, and then we would be ready mm -hmm. to apply for future grants. Yeah. Well, I volunteer to let them. Do measurements at my house. <laughs> they can do measurements in my office. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. That sounds like a, a no brainer. We should go for that. Yeah. Cool. Great. Yeah. That's good. Um, I think maybe that might require a vote to apply to the program or. I think we probably should, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that, that, the weird vote didn't appear here, but oh, well, let's right. vote anyway. Yeah. Let's yeah. vote on it. I, I, I would entertain a motion then. On um, this one, we apply to the municipal digital equity planning program. I second that. Okay. All of those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Great. All right. We're we're going to be able to have a break between now and the uh, I know I should have crammed more stuff. Put it put more <laughs> stuff on the agenda. Well, uh, we'll see if I can drag these out a little. All right. Okay. Item D to discuss and vote on whether to adopt winter parking regulations. And uh, that's not very controversial, unless someone's here. Um, this is about parking in the streets and municipal parking lots just between midnight and 7 a.m. And this is about being able to remove snow from these places when the snow comes. That's what it's really about. Uh, but it, it doesn't depend on snow. It just depends on this whole time of year. Yeah, that's my understanding of it. Uh, although Spike's house, people get to stay parked there because that's where they live. Um, are there any questions or any comments on? I assume I assume this is the language that's typically used. Yeah, but I don't see any problematic. Yeah. Oh, I should. No, can we amend that to 2020? I was just going to say, can we amend that? I'm going to force that. Why would we die? Moments before. Retroactively. Okay. Well, I would move that we add the winter parking restrictions language as amended to uh, until April 20, April 15, 2023. Now, second half. Okay. Uh, all of those in favor? Aye. Aye. So you're you're guaranteeing us no late April snow. Jumps. Yes, no late April snow. Jumps. There we go. Okay, great. Um, next one, uh, another one that uh, uh, does not usually engender much of a, a controversy. We'd like to discuss and vote on whether to allow the Waitley Snowmobile Club to park at the former DeMaio property on State Road. Um, this is one we've done in the past. Um, They've always been good neighbors about it. I've never heard any complaints about shenanigans or anything like that happening. Um, yeah. So, and they provide a certificate of liability for yeah. their usage of the property in case anything like that happens. Yeah. Okay. Will we allow these with these snowmobile clubs to park at the former the mail property? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, I, I, okay, great. Um, oh, here's one to discuss and vote on whether to appoint Larry Ashman as a library trustee until the next annual election. So this came up because I think a, well, a trustee stepped down. Is that right? Yes, yeah, Sheila Powers um, resigned from the library trustees. Okay, and uh, uh, until the next election, then it's the library trustees and the selectmen together and do the appointment and Larry Ashman is the person the library trustees are putting forward. And so if we as a group approve this, they've already approved it, Larry Ashman will be uh, will be on the library trustees. The, the kicker is that they've approved it with more than three people with three votes. Wait. 
So it's a joint vote. How many did you? How many voted for you? Five. Five. So oh. if you vote no, it's still a five to three vote. Oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. That's but, too long. Mm, I see. But if you were a select board of five, it, it would matter. It would matter. It would matter yes. More. Okay. <laughs> well, we're we're all about obeying the law around here, especially when it doesn't cost us anything. Um, <laughs> could I have a motion on this one? Please? I move to appoint Larry Ashman as library trustee until the next annual election. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ain't nothing. Ain't to nothing. Oh, and Larry Ashman, he's awesome. <laughs> Stepping up to the plate here at the library trustees. Thank you, Larry. Okay, then. Um, a uh, last item under new business to discuss and vote on whether to appoint Andrew Pepin, I hope I pronounced that right, as a member of the Recreation Commission. And I think this person has the support of members of the Rec Commission. Yeah, the request was from the Recreation Commission Chair. Okay. Uh, I was told that the individual has children who participate in the, the Rec programs and they want to Step up. No, I'm in favor of that. Have more people involved in that. Yeah. I move we appoint Andrew Pepin as a member of the Recreation Commission. I'll second that. Okay, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, very good. I'll turn it over to Brian now for town administrator updates and take as much time as you like, Brian. All right. <laughs> um, tax classification here and follow up. Obviously, the last meeting was was the tax classification hearing, um, and I guess I want to try to make the process next time as smooth as possible. Um, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We had the tax rate working group the previous year, mm -hmm. um, and we went through uh, we went through all, all of the all of the data and information. Um, I still felt, even with the tax rate working group, we didn't quite have everything that we would have liked, especially in terms of the small commercial exemption in terms of the calculations. I mean, one thought is, is that, is that we just make a direct request um, for the Board of Assessors to do the calculations, um, you know, yeah. to run the numbers yeah. essentially for the small commercial exemption for the open space discount, which will be none, which will right. be no problem. Do we know why don't we code for open space? We open. got so much open space. We that would be so helpful to farmers. I, I know I've heard the answer before, but I, I don't remember. Oh, okay. What is it? It's just in terms of how it's classified. When I was doing some research, I, I don't think many municipalities coded with the 200 classification. I don't know why. I, 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 I looked very few do it through the state thing. There are almost none that did. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, because we had like an open space committee. I mean, open space is important to us. Yeah. Would it be it's, nice if it's man, a different coding. I'm not sure exactly. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, it, does, it sounds like a bureaucratic thing that it might be asking the assessor to do more work. But our assessor got a raise. They're getting more money, so we should get more work. From them, right? According to you know the way many people think. Um, so, I mean, it seems like we're asking them to do some work that they're not accustomed to doing, and I think we'll get some pushback. But I think we still should ask, and we think that's the information we need. Um, and they might come back and say, well, "Why do you want that information?" I just want the information. Yeah. And we should probably make the request maybe August. Um, we can make it now with a reminder for yeah. maybe in August. Yeah, but it's not just request for information. We suppose the meetings that we had a couple you know, last week, the assessors are supposed to make a presentation. They are supposed to present to us, not mm -hmm. just right. be witnesses. They, yeah. they, they are supposed to give all these facts in the form of some sort of people happen to look at the paper like the day after yeah. and we'll talk a little bit about Amherst thing with the single tax rate, but it was all about the assessor making a presentation to the Amherst board. Yeah. And you know, presenting the options and the numbers. 
No. Oh, well, do they record their meetings? Maybe I, we can get a copy of the recording. I, I, I just we remember can, seeing that. Or we can find out what that report is really but, like and use that as a model. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, Brian, I think am I corrected? That they are supposed to make a presentation to the yeah, board. The law says that they're the law says that they are to provide the information to okay. the select board. Okay. And, and making a recommendation is an optional. Okay. The last so that you can, I mean the information doesn't have to be a presentation then, but it would presumably have to be if it's not a presentation. But in, in many cases it is in many towns. Yeah, I think it is. And, and you could it, it's common to when I when I'm looking through this information, you it's common to PowerPoints to pop up on Google search and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Granted, there there are different levels of mm -hmm. information and complexity, I think, depending on on, on yeah. how complicated the town or city yeah. is, but um there's a lot out yeah. there. Well I well I wonder if then making um a very focused and specific <clears throat> you know list of things we want to know. Um yeah and that um uh that they have to take seriously. Right. Related to what Fred had brought up during the tax classification meeting, um <clears throat> is there some way that we can discover uh, information about the number of residents in town on pieces of property and the number of those residents who are on fixed incomes because you were talking about right. <clears throat> excuse yeah. me kind of a little allergic reaction um giving some kind of a break you mm -hmm. know in a split tax rate to mm -hmm. residents and to folks yeah. who are on fixed incomes but I felt like I couldn't make yeah. that decision without understanding yeah, who right. would affect that company? Right, like, yeah. is it fifty percent of our yeah. population of fixed income, or twenty five percent? Yeah, ditto with the small business. I wasn't I, clear who it would affect and how. how well, but those are yeah. numbers we don't have. We didn't have those. Right, numbers. as far as censors might not have getting yeah. the number on fixed income may be difficult. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't on sure a, that. I did a very rough look at the uh, the list of residents. Mm -hmm. As of I think two years ago was the latest I had, and at that point, roughly forty percent of the residents in town were sixty and over, mm -hmm. and I think it was fifty percent, fifty-two percent that I were fifty and over mm -hmm. as of two, three years ago. So. We have, relatively speaking, an older population. One would have to think that, you know, I don't know if we get Social Security administration information yeah, about who, who's on fixed income, but if we've got 40% plus who are 60 and over, a, a decent number of those would have to assume are going to be on fixed income. Right. Not without even getting into people who are younger on um, disability or other other forms of fixed income aside from just social security. Right. I wonder if there's a way to kind of extrapolate that information from <clears throat> perhaps statewide, you know, percentages of the number of people in Massachusetts over 60 who tend to be on a fixed income and then just apply that percentage to our town and say, well, mm -hmm. out of this right. yeah. like find a way to yeah, yeah. Right, right now we don't have the numbers and yeah. Yeah. We numbers, are just oh God, thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that might be a good thing to uh, just, just really think about what the information we want in advance. What is uh, reasonable to expect the assessors to find? And what would we need to uh, do to supplement the information right. to make a more reasonable decision rather or, yeah, decision. or an informed decision? And I think we could reach out to people like Paul and Taya. Maybe some of the other people who were here, um, because they're clearly very interested, um, and you know, really, you know, I, I think people make better decisions when they're well informed, and that's not just us; that's the whole town. You know, the last time we had an override, we passed it because people were well informed, and there was a group that went out and made sure people understood what was going on. You know, so they. I'm not saying that this has to go to a plebiscite, but I think it's a decision that we need 
you know, the people of the town to actually understand why we're doing it. If they, whether they like it or if they don't, might be depend on their role. But um, but if people understand why we're doing it, what data we're basing it on, um, I think it would be a lot easier for people to accept. Those who are going to have to pay more would be it'd be much easier to accept. I, I mean, it's clear going back and looking, listening to the comments last week that people don't understand right. the process at all uh, yes that this is and there was we, a, we have to do this every year that, that's right <laughs> this isn't what and, and it hasn't case. been a, uh, it hasn't been as big a deal in previous years because it, it comes up we catch this by surprise oh we've always done a uh, single tax rate okay right. let's just keep doing it right. um and but only in the last couple of years have we really looked at it more closely right. and, 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 and that that also the split tax rate doesn't impact the total tax levy. It's just a question of how that's right. divided. That's right. That's groups. right. There were, but there was some comments about the town wanting to raise money. Well, this isn't about the town. We get. Raising we can't. We don't get to raise more money. Right. This that's is right. about getting extra money. This is about how we divide who pays. Right. What we know we have to raise. And 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 that part of the idea that this this you're trying to punish us. Like, Whoa. No. That's, <laughs> that's not our job. <laughs> Seems like maybe next year we can have a. Um, run-up campaign to uh, community education and community inclusion on yes. the decision. Yes, so I that think people, that. you know, are well informed about what's being discussed and why, and then because if they have a voice in it, it's not, that's not a last minute sort of, what are you doing? Kind of yeah, yeah. Like, which is how it's always been. It's always either been the last, we hope we yeah. last minute we have this meeting, oh, we've always done it this way, we don't have the facts. Yeah, and so we stick with what we've done, right? Let's be yeah. ideal. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um, All right. Center School RFP outreach. Um, so the RFP for the Center School is out. Um, oh, it's on the website. It's on uh, uh, social media. Uh, it's been posted in the ways that we need to. Um, in terms of that as the law requires but i've only i've only had one request for somebody to have a copy of it oh um okay so i don't know if that's a if it's an advertisement in the paper or i don't know but sign, the, maybe, sign maybe down. write an article in the newspaper like follow-up article the follow-up article yeah. about how the RFP, yeah. this great rfp is out there yeah yeah um yeah. I mean, last time I think we dragged the the big sandwich board sign down and put it in front of the school. Oh, it's in front of the center school. We might try that. Uh -huh. um, things kind of get lost in the classifieds yeah. of newspapers. Yeah, yeah, um, that yeah, is that is the fine print so, section. Um, I don't think we necessarily want to go to the steps of finding a broker or anything like that because then we would end up yeah you know, paying for that. that yeah, yeah. Um, might cost real money. But I, I think that's sort of my next step is to bring the sign down. Um, yeah, bring the sign down for sure. Is that? And then see, see if it's possible to get something a little bit more prominent in, in the papers. Um, okay. So that's that's where we are with that. Is there any way to get publicity or send to like area not for profits that might? Have members that could have some ideas. Yeah. Maybe a, a, education related or health related. Yeah. Anything that might. Yeah. We can easily look into that further too. Um, I'll send it to the. I've never met the new chamber director, but mm. it's right there as well. But if anybody has any ideas on. Happy well, you did a good job of the outreach on the great on the uh, field early. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. 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 Maybe that'll you're, you're on the roll with this outreach business. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe that'll work for this. Yeah. Kind of. There's an overlap, right? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, Haiti Road would be construction project, but still, it, it's kind of status quo. Uh, we had a meeting with the designer. Um. And we asked them to uh, see if it was at all possible to eliminate the impacts of, to Article 97 lands, which would be a huge 
burden off of our shoulders and our hands and shoulders of having to, mm. you know, having to go through that process. I, I guess I was always under the assumption that that's a part of the design process. I was kind of surprised when they said that they hadn't done that. But I assume you're trying to minimize impacts to permanently protect the land, but that wasn't necessarily the case. So we're waiting to hear back from the designers oh, okay. as to whether they can sort of or the road um, in a way um, that minimizes it. I mean, it either needs to eliminate them, which means we don't go through the process. If they minimize it, there's marginal benefit to us in terms of process, because yeah. even if it's one square foot of Article 97, you know, going through the process has yeah. saturation. But, um, you yeah. know, that, that's where that project is at, at, at this point. But it, it, if we can minimize it, can we, will it involve that back to the legislature to, to get around it? Yes. Yeah, and provide land in mitigation. We have to so essentially a land swap if they're going to approve it. And yeah, so to be continued. Okay. Back. Um, capital plan project request will never run out to all departments and boards and commissions seeking uh, capital project request submitted before the end of the year. Um, the construction of the, the offices out in the, the space behind the town clerk treasure collector's office. Um, we got bumped up uh, with the installation. It's, it'll likely happen is that next week. Uh, next week. Um, hopefully we'll be able to have that uh, built set up um, and we'll keep working on the arrangements of, of the offices here. Um, fire chief mandatory retirement replacement process. Um, as most people know, uh, the current fire chief is going to reach the re mandatory retirement age um, in June. Um, so Fred is the, uh, the fire department liaison and myself have met um, with some of the officers of the, of the fire department and um, we talked about the, you know, the replacement process and, and the timing and everything. And I think our, our first step is we're going to review the, um, review the job description. Um, we've asked for the officers of the fire department to review it and we'll review it um, and that will um, and if there's any changes it will go to the personnel committee for you know for review and recommendation to the select board once we get the job description um, into a place where that we like um, then we could put it out you know we could advertise the position I think we were aiming for January February um, so the idea was maybe January and February um, if the board's inclined to to uh, name the replacement at that point, um, so that they could participate in the, the FY twenty four budget process, uh, because I think that's that's when the when the current chief retires in June. You know, you have how yeah. many other days? Right. You know, right. twenty yeah, days that that participating in the aspect. So that budget is really going to be the new chief's first. First year, you know, mm -hmm. so we would, uh, I think it would be ideal to have them part of the process. Yeah. Um, and then um, the last thing is that the town received its, uh, the free cash is certified. Um, and it was, I don't think I wrote it down here. Well, I did. Well, I, wrote, I wrote it down in my notes, but I guess. Was it free? And so five hundred ninety-three thousand ten dollars, um, and the enterprise fund retained earnings are eighteen thousand eight thirty-three. Um, and so that is um, the status of, of those two accounts. Um, that is about it. Um, at some point, I think um, right now is that I'm going to jump ahead if that's okay in terms of next meetings. Um, so next meeting would be December 13th, if we're going by the, by the, the Tuesdays, is there, in terms of the, the second meeting in December, is there a preference for a tentative date? Because sometimes the last uh, so, doesn't yeah. wrap up and we right. sort of need a, a la quick, Yeah, the last yeah. Thursday, last Tuesday is the 27th. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that myself. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And licensed stuff would probably be, would be caught there. I know the licenses are supposed to be done by the 30th. Or third, well, 30th, that's the right. well, business day. Yeah, the main um, the main discussion on licenses will, will hopefully be the 13th. Okay. And he's been working hard to get all the all the applications in. But if everybody came in. Oh, okay. No, but if there's okay. anything left over, it's always nice to have the option. So if we need to okay. we need to address it. Okay. So okay. and so we'll call that second meeting, December 27th. That's all I have. CPA application for the Oh, wait, I have two notes here. Thank you. Good remember. Good, good remember. And I'm six just PM. proud of it because I did it. I know that's right. <laughs> um, so Greta, I don't know if you provide any more information of this uh, on this. So I think you're part of the capital frontier capital committee. Yeah. So there's a request from the frontier to the town for a capital assessment for uh the reconstruction of the tennis courts at the high school. Um, and they wanted to send it out to the towns early because that would be a CPA eligible expense. I believe it would be for eleven. Way we share would be eleven thousand um, dollars. Okay. So who I mean, makes ideally, the CPA application for that? The town does, or is yeah, that the, like the, the, the town would, would do it? It's actually it. Amy's already written it. Um, on top of it, on but top of it. if Our the town employees are awesome. If the select board said we're not doing CPA application, then we wouldn't submit it. No. And then we would probably have to find eleven thousand dollars somewhere else. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Um, so that's our recommendation that we would submit that application yeah. to the CPC. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the deadline is for the next two weeks. Um yeah, it's soon. So early December. So we yeah. just want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. This, this was an issue with the Frontier Capital Committee because they were trying to find a way that the total project I think is three hundred thousand. They've got two hundred thousand from another source. Yeah, so they've got a hundred thousand. They've got to find. And Among the there towns. was a question of whether to ask for CPA funds because then they'd have to wait for a town meeting to get those funds approved in each of the four uh -huh. towns, and it would have to be approved by for CPA funds from all four towns. Um, just, but if they it, just ask each town now. Right. right, the towns themselves can do the CPA application, and right. it's one would not be contingent on the others. Right, I think they did that last year yeah. too for some other. Yeah, CPA this this is all a, a timing thing. That, yeah, what well, what pocket the money is going to come out of? From, yeah, which they often have. Okay, well, school. I'd say we don't waste Amy's good work. The <laughs> CPA application ready. I think that's a good use, especially if it's legal, because. That's another thing we like. And it's the yeah. capital really went out and inspected the tennis courts. They're a mess. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they are really, um, yeah. I don't know how many town residents actually use them. Yeah, I don't, yeah I'm not a tennis player. I know you're shocked, but no, I'm not a tennis player. Not, but nonetheless, yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a it's a resource for yeah. the community. Presumably, yeah. Whitney students would use them. Yeah, and the class students would use them. Get around the tennis yeah. team. Or tennis team, tennis or club. Or pickleball. Or pickleball. Or pickleball. Yeah. Or pickleball. Oh, okay. right. Oh, it's a community pickleball. Oh. Yeah, they're going to use pickleball. I see. All right, we got to keep them in good shape. Though. So we have that. And then um, just I would just ask that we all think about um, New Pro is going to be leaving the back space at the end of December. Uh -huh. um, so that space will free up and we'll sort of need to think okay. about right. next steps with that. So, space for lease. Yeah. Okay. For everybody who's watching this at all. Um, I know there's been storage crunches for different organizations in town as well. Um, yeah. So, we'll just have yeah. to think about it. Just think about it. There, is there a way to make that? More useful storage. Um, I mean, there are some bookshelves back there, but not everything does well stored on bookshelves. And it's like you, using it for storage essentially commits us to using it for storage and not renting it and as and, uh, yeah. people to move stuff in and then we right. rent it out to someone. Right. So if, right. Like they move it back out again. Control. Right. Right. Well, if, if you know, if we had storage needs yeah. that would take up 
I don't know, a third or a quarter of the space. And it might take some money to actually make it useful storage that could be separate and secure and so on. Yeah. Um, that's something we can consider as well. Um, yeah. How big is the space? Oh, well, we might have time for a tour oh, because okay. we'll have to, yeah, we can take a tour right now. Um, well, not right now, after the meeting is uh, is closed. Do you have any, any <clears throat> other uh, items not in? I don't think so, unless Amy's going to remind me of something <laughs> no. else. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I okay. that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.